Hey there, welcome after a long break. This break was caused by the fact that I was working on my Kiwi book. The book is called GUI Programming with Python and Kiwi and is now available on Amazon and on my website. It was just published. Now, on Amazon there are three versions available. The ebook version in color and two paperback versions, one in color and one in black and white. They differ in price. On my website you can get the PDF version in full color, of course. Now, I will leave the links and the description of the book down below in the description of this video. Now, in this series here on my YouTube channel and on my Prosper Coder blog at prospercoder.com, you can see just portions of the book, so the most important parts will be covered here. If you're interested in the whole project and want to learn how to make it from scratch, and develop it until deployment, you can just purchase my book on my website or on Amazon. The links are down below in the description. Now let's get back to our project. So this is part 32 of the Kiwi project. Today we'll learn how to reference widgets using IDs. We'll make use of the two test files again. So here's the code we're going to use in the test.py file. Very basic, we have a box layout from which we inherit and we create a test layout class and we return the test layout class. Here's the kiwi file, very basic too. So here's the test layout, we have a button, a label and another button. Now as you can see the code is very very simple and we didn't set the text property on any of the widgets. We'll do it using IDs, both in Kiwi and in Python. Now, if you run this app, you will see something like this. So, two buttons, we can click them, and one label in the middle. Now, let's add some IDs. We only have to add them to the widgets that we want to reference. We can use any string for an ID, but to make them stand out in our code, I will start the names with an underscore. This is by no means necessary, but this convention is pretty often used. So here's our code. Let's go to the Kiwi file and let's add some IDs. Now, we want to be able to reference widgets inside other widgets. So, let's add IDs to them. For example, we want to be able to reference the label inside the button, the first button. So, let's add an ID to the label. We just use the ID property and here's the name of the ID. So, as just mentioned before, here I'm using an underscore to differentiate this name from other names. And now we have this ID and we can reference this label by this ID. So, let's say this button, the first button, should display the text from the label. So, we can use this ID to do that. So, text, and we can set it to underscore label dot text. Now, this button will set its text property to the text property on the label. It references the label by its ID. Now let's set the text property to the label. So let's say text, hey, something very simple. And now this text should be also displayed on the button. Let's run this code, let's save it first and run. As you can see, this is the text on the label and also on the button. Good. Now, let's say the second button should display the string representation of the size property of the first button. So we have to reference the first button. To do that, we have to add an ID to the first button. We can do it like so. Button ID, let's say button 1. Good. And now, we can set the text property of the second button to something like this. 
So the size property on the first button, which is referenced here by D, and this is converted to a string so that it can be represented as a text. Good. And one more thing. Let's add here an event on press, which we are going to handle a bit later. So on the first button, when the button is pressed, this set text method is going to be called. We're going to define it in the test layout class in a minute. Good. So here we have it. Let's save it now and run the app one more time. Now, the text on the label is hey. The text on the first button is also hey because this is how we set it here. We set the text on the button to the text from the label, which is hey. And now on the second button we have the text, which is a representation of the size of the first button. So if we change the size of the window, this will also change. Good. Now, how do you use KV IDs in Python code? If you want to reference the IDs in Python code, you can use the IDs property. Let's demonstrate it on the example of the setText method defined here in the test layout class. So let's go to Python code and define this method over here. Good. Now, this method is called when the first button is pressed. Suppose you want the method to set the text property to changed. This is the text property on the label. First, we have to reference the label and we can do it like so. IDS IDs dot here is the ID that we define in the kidney file and the text property. Now, the IDs are accessible inside the rule where they were added. In our case, they are accessible inside test layout, which is the parent of the button. So from the IDs inside the test layout, we selected underscore label that references the label and set its text property to a new value. And now let's run this program and watch what happens when I press the first button. So here's the first button. Let's press it. Good. This change to changed. But as you can see, the text changed not only on the label as it was supposed to do, but also on the first button. Why is that? Well, if you look at the text property on the first button, you will see that it's set to the text property on the label. So properties react to all changes. So if there is a change in the text property on the label, the change will be also visible on the button. We will be using IDs extensively in our project, but first of all, we'll be using them to reference widgets by means of custom properties. Kiwi properties are very powerful and we'll be using them a lot. In the next part of the Kiwi series, we'll be talking about the basics of properties and we'll see how to use them to reference widgets. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.